Okay, you beautiful New Zealanders, we're not Aotearoa rights, we're Kiwis, all of us. Yesterday, I talked about a government department which is being marified, and that was the ACC. We looked at Maori health practitioners and tohongas and a whole lot of other stuff. You know what? We thought that when we elected National to power that they were going to rid the country of apartheid, separatism and racism. It hasn't turned out to be true at all. As it turns out, they're keeping them all going. And the guy who's doing this is Chris Luxon, and I'll tell you why. As you well know, all the national MPs have to follow the party line, and they have to believe what the PM believes and think the way he thinks. That's what it's like with party politics. So if we observe apartheid, separatism, and racism in our government, ultimately, it's Chris Luxon who is to blame. You know what? This guy could very quickly rid this country of apartheid and racism and separatism. He could get rid of all race-based legislation out of our um, statutes just with a click of a finger. But it's not happening. In fact, he's keeping it all going. In fact, he's fueling more of it. It's so obvious Chris has a love for all things Maori. How do we prove this? Well, the answer is we look for evidence. Yesterday, it was ACC that's incredibly clear that ACC, as a corporation, is being marified by the National Party. Well, today it's the IRD, so we're going to have a quick look at the IRD. Buckle up, and let's dive in. Okay, everybody, let's just go and have a look at the IRD website. And you can get onto that website by going up here, look, ird.dovt.nz. And then the next thing you do is you click on businesses and organizations right in the middle there. So click on that one. And like I'm about to do, so we click on this. And then the next thing we click on is we click on tax rates for businesses right there. And then what you do is, is once you click on that, you get to see what the tax rates for businesses are. Just scroll down a bit. And then it says here very openly, incredibly, it says most companies 28%. And then the next thing it says is Maori authorities, Maori businesses, 17.5%. So there is apartheid right there. There's racism right there. So a Maori electrician with his business is, at, is running at a competitive advantage over a, a, a non-Maori business because he's only paying half the tax rate. Well, is that fair? No. Is that a level playing field? No. It also means that Maori are not contributing so much to the tax take. So we're all having to, all non-Maori having to carry the can for roading, police, nurses, schooling, education. We're paying the lion's share because our tax rate's higher. Did you know this? Well, in my research, I also wanted to find out what the heck is going on with um, the whole tax situation with Maori in New Zealand and this is what I found. Um, Maori draw disproportionately more welfare than non-Maori. Here's a quote from Twisting the Treaty, the Tribal Grab for Wealth and Power, Trust Publishing. Maori continue to draw disproportionately more welfare than non-Maori. Tipuni Kokori advised the incoming Minister of Maori Affairs in December 2011 that welfare payments to Maori exceeded tax paid by Maori. Now that is 2011, but I can tell you that between 2011 and 2024, the amount of advantage given to Maori has absolutely exploded and those figures would be completely the same today. That opinion, it would be a lot worse, the situation with Maori drawing more than they're giving. Don Brash, ex-National Party leader, he said this publicly, the newly wealthy tribal corporations are lauded for contributing to the economy, but these entities pay little tax because they trade as charities. See, what happened is when settlements are made, the government foolishly paid out massive amounts of cash and assets to tribal groups. And what they did was, it's completely crazy and it's hard to believe it happened, but they, they went out and they bought supermarkets, tourist operations, hotels, lots of businesses that were existing businesses. So they didn't have to do the hard work actually establishing a business. They just went out and bought businesses. 
and the government let them set them up as charities so they don't pay tax. Can you believe that happened? And this is what's going on in New Zealand. So many, many Maori corporations and businesses just don't pay any tax at all. And they're getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. And what's happening is that they're getting more and more powerful and we're paying for it all. And the stupidity of this is that the more powerful they get, the more leverage they get to take over the country. We're actually paying Maori to take over the country. That's what's happening. We pay all their legal fees when they want to make a claim against the government. We give them half the tax rate. We let them set themselves up as charities. I mean, this is absolute madness, but this is what's happening. We are actually paying for a group of people in the country to take over the country. Well, Don goes on. He says, for example, South Island tribe Naitahu announced a net worth of $1.47 billion in its 2014 report. Their tax-free income, ignoring the Australian subsidy income, is $157 million. You know, I fully realise that this is 2014 we're talking about here, but what you've got to realise is that things have got a lot worse. There's just bigger and bigger numbers involved now in 2024, but the charity status has not changed between 2014 and 2024. That's the key point. The figures have just got bigger. The tax situation has stayed the same. The tribe paid no tax on its New Zealand business operations and distributed 6.5 million to, to shareholders. So they made 157 million, paid no tax on it, and they gave away 6.5 million to all their Maori shareholders. No taxes is attached to these distributions. In other words, when they divided up 6.5 million by the number of Maori inside Naitahu, none of them had to pay tax. They were just given this big lump sum of money as would be the dividends distributed to shareholders and non-charitable trading companies, which is the 33%. So non-Maori in the same situation would have had to pay 33% on their dividend to a shareholder. This tax exemption gives substantial competitive advantage to Maori. Well, you know what this is going to do? This is going to encourage people to buy shares in Naitahu. Why? Because when they give out a dividend at the end of the year, the financial year, those shareholders don't have to pay any tax. So everybody's going to be wanting to invest in Naitahu because you don't have to pay tax when you get a payout. This is crazy. And then Don gives an example. He says, for example, Naitahu and Waikato Tainui jointly own the bus company called Go Bus. So there's a bus company called Go Bus. The tax advantage arguably enabled Go Bus to undercut other bus companies in bidding successfully for contracts in the Hawke's Bay in Auckland. Because they're not paying any tax, they're able to undercut other bus companies who can't compete with them. Again, this is making Maori wealthy at the disadvantage of non-Maori. This is apartheid. This is racism. This is South Africa. Don summarizes by saying, this leads to those iwi-based businesses having a very substantial advantage over other businesses. It's like starting a 100 meter running race 10 meters ahead of the rest of the race competitors if that was a running race and we saw that on tv with a maori starting 10 meters ahead of the other runners in a 100 meter race you you would shout stop that's completely wrong it's got to be a fair race wouldn't we would we cry out from the stands as spectators watching a race like that dr muriel newman she's a fantastic lady with her husband frank they run the New Zealand Centre for Political Research, do an amazing job for New Zealand. They had a, a guest researcher write about this. His name was Dr. Michael Guzmet, and he says this, It is interesting to read Naitahu's defence on their website for their charitable status and the income tax exemption that applies to its commercial empire. Quote, The commercial sex of Naitahu needs no introduction. A $170 million settle settlement in 19... 98 has in the space of 20 years been turned into 1.3 billion give or take a dollar or two so they got this big payout 170 million in 1998 how have they done that the phenomenal rate of growth of their empire has been achieved through the significant acquisition of many previously paying income tax paying for profit entities which overnight because of the income tax exempt status of Notahu's charitable as the sole shareholder also claims the fiscal privilege yet those activities are unrelated to the charitable purpose of the trustee in other words what he's saying is 
He's saying they went out and bought all these businesses and these businesses, existing businesses, were paying good tax and contributing to the country. Suddenly, Naitahu bought them. They were all turned into charities and they've been able to make phenomenal money because they pay no tax. Is this insanity or what? Over the past 20 years, there have been, at one time or another, 70 limited liability companies, 18 joint ventures and three associate companies under Naitahu's control. Currently, Naitahu has 39 trading entities that are registered as tax charities. In other words, 13, 39 businesses running paying no tax. Today, Naitahu operate a substantial commercial operation at the taxpayer of New Zealand. We subsidise it. So we pay for all the roads, the police. We pay for all the infrastructure around New Zealand. We pay for the school teachers and we pay for everything that the tax is supposed to pay for. Non-Maori are all paying for all this, but Maori are not. With the Maori economy now topping 70 billion, Maori business corporations should not be subsidised by taxpayers. Their tax exempt status should be removed. It's time they contributed their fair share of tax to help build the, the country's infrastructure and fund social services just like everyone else. This is what Michael is saying. So here's a summary for us as we finish this video. Maori are taking more money from the economy than they are contributing. Maori, many Maori businesses are running as charities. They pay little or no tax. This gives them considerable advantage over non-Maori business, so it's completely unfair. The 100 meter running race. Most Maori businesses, other than their charities, are paying only 17% tax, whereas everyone else is paying 28%. It would be fair to say that when it comes to paying for the running of the country, non-Maori are carrying Maoris in New Zealand. And that's the facts. See you tomorrow. Okay, let's wrap this up. I've been saying in a series that Chris Luxon, our Prime Minister, is an activist. At the beginning of this video, I put it to you that the National Party is continuing full on with marifying New Zealand and keeping co-governance going. I have said that Chris Luxton has the power and the influence to instantly stop all this, but he doesn't. He can do it. Why? He's an activist. By this I mean that anyone who sees and observes apartheid, separatism, and racism in our country and has the full power to fix the problem and doesn't must be an activist surely that's the key point he has the power to do this the national party has the power to do it act in new zealand first would get behind chris if he wanted to fix all this in a heartbeat they would chris is the one who is the reluctant partner when it comes to getting rid of separatism racism and apartheid in the coalition only an activist would want to keep them going only an activist would do nothing to stop them that's the truth folks please share this video with everyone everywhere the mainstream media should be reporting on the issues i am raising in these videos but they're not why aren't they well they're corrupt why are they corrupt they are collaborating with maori activists there's no doubt about that in the final analysis, the people of New Zealand, that's us, have ultimate power, not the politicians. Did you know that? The people can kick out the people in power and they can put them into power. How are we going to do that? Well, awareness is the key to change. If enough people in New Zealand become aware of the issues I am raising, we can save this beautiful country. So share these videos everywhere so that come the next election, we can vote the right people in and kick out the people who are destroying New Zealand.